lads and lassies. So, you're hoping to learn how to paint. Well, a fair play to you. But you're probably a little bit overwhelmed. You don't know what to get. You don't know what brushes. You don't know what paint. Oh, slow down. I'm going to break it down. There are only five things that you're going to need to start painting today. So, number one, paint. Now, the question is what type of paint? Because you have two main categories of paint, oil-based and water-based. But for beginners, I personally highly recommend acrylic paint. It's water-based, so it's easy to clean up afterwards. It dries quicker, so if you make a mistake, you can go over it in five seconds. A lot of professional painters still use acrylic. It's not baby stuff now. Do you know, there's a painter that I want to show you by the name of Jim, and he paints with acrylic, and by golly, he paints some great stuff. And maybe someday you can go into the oils and you can be like the classical renaissance painters. Because oils definitely has its benefits. But starting with acrylic, absolutely. All you need with acrylic is water. With oil, you need different types of solvents. You need thinner. You need white spirits. It's not very easy. But with acrylic, all you need is a cup of water. Now, what type of acrylic paint to buy? Well, I recommend a brand by the name of Winston Newton. So you can get these kind of big tubs um, for a fairly good price. And it does the job. It does the job. So number two is brushes. Now with brushes, you don't need to worry at all. You can go as cheap as you want. Because brushes nowadays are all kind of synthetic. So, and they're fairly good. You know, I'm using, I use cheap old brushes around the place. They last as well. They do last. But, uh, and if you want, you can buy new ones. Do you know, I saw a brush there online. And it was a small brush. And it was 300 euro for a brush. I don't know what's going on in these people's heads. I don't know who's buying 300 euro brushes. So I recommend going cheaper brushes. I would recommend making sure to find an angled brush, right? They're the angle and they're great because you can get, you can use it as a flat brush if you have it at an angle, but you can also use it for the little tip to get little details. So it is a great brush. The angled brush is definitely one to keep an eye out for. They're actually kind of hard to find. So if you find one, buy it, but don't spend 300 euro on it. Number three, canvas. So there's three main types of canvas. There's the stretched canvas, which they stretch around a wooden frame. These are ideal because if you do your little painting of, of a little mermaid or whatever you're painting, I don't know what you're painting, you know, you're painting your friend, you're painting your mommy, you know, you put it, you paint it on this and you can hang this straight up on the kitchen wall and your mommy will be so proud of you. The other option, is the canvas board. So these are flat pieces of basically kind of canvas, cardboardy kind of stuff. And you can paint straight onto that. It's obviously cheaper, but you can't hang it. So mommy's not gonna be proud of you, but they're great for practicing as well and starting out. You can also buy this books like this, which are just like a books with acrylic sheets in them that you can actually paint onto. Or I would start out with the book and the sheets and just pick up your skill a little bit just practice around a little bit but you're trying to get to this because once you start once you're painting on on these canvases whatever you paint can be hung up directly on the wall and you know even if you're not great at painting ho like homemade art is always beautiful up on the walls you know even if you don't know what you're doing it's it's lovely to put up your own art around the place because that's yours you made that and no one can take that away from you. Nobody. Nobody. So number four, a palette. Now the palette is where all of the experimentation and the color mixing is going to be happening. Now I use a glass sheet which has been attached to gray styrofoam kind of. I'll show, I can make a video about how to make that palette from home. It's not too bad. If you're starting out, I'd recommend using these. Uh, disposable tear-off palettes and they're great for when you're first starting out because you just mix your colors onto the sheet and when you're done you rip it up throw it away simple as that so number five the easel now an easel actually isn't really necessary to be honest it's not as important as the other things it's not a necessity um, the easel is simply a way to just put your painting stabilize your painting and put it up against something and it's more of just a practical thing. It's just handy. It can just hold your painting in place. You can kind of move it around a bit. It's it's pretty good. It's definitely not a requirement. It's definitely not an important thing, especially if you're using the books, if you're using the acrylic book um, with the sheets in it. And if you are painting on canvas, you can just put it up against the wall. 
you know, it's not really that big of a deal. But if you are getting a, an easel, you can also get cheaper easels, which are tabletop easels, which are smaller easels, which you can put on your table, and then you can put your canvas onto that. So there are options available. So that's it. That's all you need. So there's no excuse now. I'll be checking back in with you, and I want to hear from you that you started painting, you got all the things you needed, and now you want to learn how to paint and what to paint. That's the next step, and that's fine too. You'll figure that out. What to paint, how to paint. These things are not that hard, and you'll be fine. <laughs>